Hey guys, it's Mish, and today I wanted to talk about exercise science to provide a little bit of variety from just the high carb science. And specifically, I wanted to talk about how exercise intensity relates to fat burning. Because this concept that I'm about to discuss was actually introduced to me by a professor at Berkeley who came up with it because he lectured in my nutrition class. And it was a little bit mind blowing because it goes completely against what the fitness industry slash media would have you believe about the best way to burn fat through exercise. So first, I'll give you guys some background about what exactly is going on in your body when you're exercising and why it results in fat loss. So when you exercise, you need to get energy from somewhere in order to produce the muscle contractions that allow you to move. And this can either come from fat or carbs, and some protein to some extent, but it's not nearly as common. So in order to burn fat during exercise, you have to release it from your fat stores or free fatty acids in your bloodstream, which aren't too common unless you're on a keto diet. And you burn those in order to give yourself some energy. But there also comes a point at which you burn carbs instead of fat. So in order to release those carbs, you use either your blood glucose or you release them for your glycogen stores, which is how your body stores carbs in your muscles and your liver. And so the crossover concept and the point of today's video is that different exercise intensities rely on different substrates, aka carbs versus fats. At low intensities, you tend to burn more body fat than carbs. So for example, when you're resting or when you're going on an easy walk or an easy jog, you burn more fat compared to carbs. So this is a great way to burn body fat. Whereas at higher intensities, such as sprinting and weightlifting to some extent, and things that really get your heart rate towards its maximum, you tend to rely more on glucose, which is stored, as I said, in your muscle glycogen and your liver. And the crossover concept is just your VO2 max, which is a percentage of your maximum effort, pretty much, at which your carbohydrate utilization is higher than your fat utilization. So there's a certain sweet spot around 50% VO2 max where you actually start using more carbs instead of fat. So if you're trying to lose weight, it makes sense to go for lower intensity exercise for longer periods in order to burn more body fat. Because when you're burning carbs at a high intensity, it will result in fat loss too. It's just as a percent of your effort, <laughs> unless you really love high intensity exercise, go for it. I mean, I do it too, just because it's great for you. But in terms of just trying to lose fat, you're actually better off going for a walk or an easy jog than trying to knock yourself out doing things you hate, like sprinting, if you hate them. <laughs> And as for VO2 max and what the sweet spot is for fat utilization versus carbohydrate utilization, aka the crossover point, the best way to think about it is that you're going to be burning the most fat compared to carbohydrates when you are 50% or below of your maximum effort. And a good way to measure this is with your heart rate. So for example, my maximum heart rate for my age is about 220. And so when I'm at 110 beats per minute or lower, I'm burning more fat compared to carbs. So that's a good way to just sort of gauge if you're in the fat burning zone, as you'll often see on cardio equipment in the gym and wondered what that meant. That just means you're below the crossover point in terms of effort. So it seems totally counterintuitive because the fitness industry would have you believe that putting in maximum effort is the way to burn maximum fat. But in fact, putting in an amount of effort where you can still talk easily, as the professor who taught this concept put it, is actually the best point at which to burn body fat. Another interesting finding is that the more you train for endurance at low intensities, the better you become at burning fat. So you become an even more efficient fat burner. So for example, marathoners are, I think they've been found to be the most efficient of all in that they just burn almost purely body fat and almost no carbs. So they're able to go for a really, really long time. They lose five pounds of water weight and fat, and then they're able to replenish after that and regain the weight back generally if they eat enough. But the point is, the more you train, the better you get at burning fat. And this goes hand in hand with why exercise tends to get easier as you keep doing the same thing because you, you know, you get better at it, you train, and it becomes easier because your body is lowering sympathetic nervous system activity in response to the same stimulus. Which is just a fancy way of saying your heart gets more efficient and you pump, it pumps less for the same amount of exercise once you get better at it. And so that's it for part one of the crossover concept, and in future videos I'll be talking about more complicated aspects of it, but that's just a little introduction and the mind-blowing fact that low-intensity exercise might in fact be better for fat burning. So if you hate exercise but want to lose weight and never thought you could, <laughs> just try going for long walks and easy jogs and things you enjoy. 
And if you love high intensity exercise, that's great too. You'll still be burning plenty of fat, just if you're trying to get the most bang for your buck in terms of fat and exercise amount slash intensity, then better off going for a little jog or a walk or a bike ride. Thanks for watching and please press subscribe to see more videos. I'd really appreciate it.